the devil is so clever with how he creeps into your mind. He does it so subtly that he'll have you thinking all these anxious, negative, self-defeating thoughts you have are coming from you when they're really coming from him. See, the devil's number one tactic to control your mind is through fear. Once he gets you into an extreme state of fear, then he works his way to stealing your peace and joy. Because we know that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and self-control, we should understand that the spirit of fear comes from the opposition, that dark force we call devil. You ever hear church people say, the devil is a liar? I finally understand that on a spiritual level. The devil really is a liar. In the Bible, he's even referred to as the father of lies. The devil is constantly trying to plant negative seeds, and he does that by sending you a self-defeating thought or an anxious thought or a depressing thought, and he hopes that you will feed into that thought so he can send you more thoughts just like it. When I think about the scripture that talks about how the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and I think about the scripture that talks about how the devil is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour, it reminds me Every day is a game of mental gymnastics. Every day is spiritual warfare going on. Because guess what? When the devil isn't creeping into your mind on his own, he's using another person to get into your head and plant negative seeds. Just like God uses people, the devil uses people too. And it's unfortunate because a lot of times the people that the devil is using, they don't even realize they're being used. It could be your own family. It could be your own friends. It could be people on social media. That's why it's so important to protect your peace. It's so important to protect your energy. Even if you have family members that you love, if you have to distance yourself from them, do that. And whenever they try to plant negative seeds, just mentally rebuke them and pray. So I'm going to be 100% transparent with you guys. I recently um, had a psychedelics trip. And in the trip... I realized anxiety comes from the devil. Because overall, I had a really good trip. It was very spiritual and enlightening, but there were certain points of the trip where I literally felt the devil like swooping in and trying to make me worry about the future. Literally, when I was feeling optimistic and joyful and just having so much gratitude, literally it was like, whew, like, well, what about this? What if this doesn't happen? The future, da 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 da, like. It was so scary and creepy, but it was it was good because I was catching it. I was like, mm, I hear you, nigga. Like, you're not slick. I hear you. I see what you're trying to do. The devil tries to steal your joy in the present by making you worry about the future. So whenever he kept swooping in, I just kept rebuking it and I just kept affirming God is in control and there's no limits to God. I have nothing to worry about. As long as I trust God. There's nothing for me to worry about. Have you ever wondered where thoughts come from? I've heard people say thoughts come from everywhere and nowhere. Me personally, I believe thoughts originate from either dark force or light source. You might think your negative thoughts come from your parents, but they don't originate from your parents. Because guess what? Your parents got their negative thoughts and beliefs from somebody else. And the somebody else they got their negative thoughts and beliefs from got it from somebody else and it goes all the way back. But when you look at who is the originator of these thoughts, depending on if they're negative or positive, I believe that the originator is either the devil or God. I want to share the scripture with you guys and then I'm going to elaborate on it. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil. The reason I share that scripture is to illustrate it's not the people we're battling, it's the spirits that are working through them, particularly dark spirits. As much as we want to see the good in people, the truth is there are some people who are just empty vessels. There are some people who are really just agents. And if you've seen the movie Matrix, you know exactly what I mean by that. So about seven or eight years ago, me and my friend Cortland went to this bar. And we met this guy. It was a white guy. He had a bald head. I'm not going to lie. He kind of looked like a skinhead, but I'm not going to say he was. I don't want to put that on him. But um, he had a really dark energy to him, even though I was under the influence. I picked up on that, but I couldn't quite figure out what it was. But I just sensed that mm, some darkness about him. And we start having a conversation and he asked me, 
have you ever had sex on the beach? And I'm like, yeah, that's my favorite drink. Cause I thought he was talking about the drink and he just started laughing. He's like, ha ha, you're so cute. No, I mean, literally have you had sex on the beach before? And I was like, well, no, cause I've never been on vacation with, you know, a boyfriend. And he started laughing again. And he's like, well, you don't have to be in a relationship with somebody to have sex with them. And in my mind, I'm like, you're right, but I'm not about to just be having casual sex with people. Like, I don't know what type of time you on, but I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not about to just have sex with somebody on the beach when I'm not in a relationship with them. Or if I don't really know them that well, I'm not about to have sex, period, <laughs> with somebody I don't know that well. But um, yeah, it, it rubbed me the wrong way, but I just thought, you know, he's just being a man. But then we started having conversations about other things. And then he revealed that he was an atheist. And um, he started saying a lot of things that rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm not gonna lie, it bothered me. And it even made me question my beliefs and it made me question my faith. So after all that, he asked me and my friend Cortland if we wanted to go back to his hotel room. Cause I guess he said they was having some crazy after party at his hotel room and he was from out of town. But I immediately was like, uh, no, like we're good. Like I'm about to just go home. He's about to just go home. We're good. Like, cause in my mind, I'm like, bro, I don't know you. I literally just met you at this bar. Secondly, you don't even believe in God. You don't even believe in any type of higher power. I don't know what type of time you want. You trying to have us come back to your hotel. Like you're not even from here. Like, no, I'm good. So I went home after that, but I'm not going to lie. When I woke up the next morning, I did not feel like myself. I felt like there was some type of dark cloud over me. I low key felt like I was in a trance and this went on for a few months where I literally felt like a zombie. I'm not gonna lie, there would be days I would go without taking a shower. That's not like me. There would be days I would literally just walk out the house without doing my hair, without doing my makeup, putting myself together. I just did not care, but because I literally felt like I was dead, I felt like there was something over me. I felt low key possessed. Like I said, this went on for a few months and it got to a point where I was like, all right, the only way I'm gonna break free, the only way I'm going to get out of this is if I just kill myself. So I literally Googled easy ways to kill yourself. And there was literally a voice like coming in my head, like, why don't you just kill yourself? Like, you know, there's 8 billion people on this planet. You're really not that important. Yeah, the people that are close to you and love you, they'll be sad at first, but eventually they'll get over it. Eventually they'll move on with their life. It was literally a voice like, it was very quiet though. It was very like, why don't you just kill yourself? Like, you know, you're not that important. But right after, there was another voice that came in that I was like, no, are you crazy? Kyla, you know better than that. You know your worth. You know your value. You know better than that. You know the gifts that I've given you. You know that you're special just based on your childhood and your whole life. Don't do that. You know better. And that voice was God. So I listened to that voice and I said, you know what, Chris, I'm not about to give up on myself and I'm not about to give up on life. I am not about to be a victim. I'm going to overcome this one way or another. And that is when I discovered the law of attraction, the universal law. And there was a point in time I was obsessed with near death experiences, people who had died and came back to life and like shared their experiences. And I stumbled across this very, very, very powerful book that changed my life. And the book is called Outwitting the Devil. And it's by Napoleon Hill. This book is the greatest book I've ever read. And I've read a lot of really good books. I still go back to this book on a regular. And not only did it change my perception of God, but it restored my faith. It didn't even restore my faith. It actually made my faith way stronger than it ever was. Like before I thought I believed in God, I thought I had faith, but it wasn't until I went through that dark time and I read that book that I was like, okay, this is what it means to actually have faith. This is what it means to actually believe in God. In the book, it talks about the six most effective fears the devil uses to control you. And that's poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, and death. And I do believe in God. I do believe in Christ. And I do believe most of the Bible is true. I think there's a lot of truth in the Bible. I'm not going to lie. I do think man went in and tweaked the little things, altered the little things. 
But for the most part, I feel like the Bible is real as However, I still feel like who and what God is, is too big for us to even wrap our human brains around. We can try to give definitions for what God is, who God is, but I feel like that still doesn't do God justice. However, I know God is real because I feel God. I feel God. I see God. I hear God. There's so many signs that are given to me every day. So it's like, I can't fully articulate or explain it, but I know that that energy, that force is real. In my last relationship, I'm gonna be honest, there was definitely a demonic spirit over that person. And I picked up on it early on. Probably the first night that we were one-on-one -on -one with each other, I definitely picked up on something. But my anxiety, and let me just rephrase that, the devil made me think it was just my anxiety. But no, it was my spirit and my discernment picking up on the fact mm, there's something dark about this person. There's some type of demonic spirit over this person. You should not go any further. Like I said, the devil was playing tricks on me, making me think it was just my anxiety. Like I said, I don't want to demonize that person because, like I said, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight the spirits that are over people. Seeking God is what brought me out of both of those dark times. And to be honest with you, I'm grateful for both of those dark times because I would not be the woman I am today without going through those things. My faith would not be as strong. I wouldn't be as strong. I wouldn't have the wisdom and knowledge that I have if I wouldn't have went through those experiences. So I don't look at myself as a victim and I don't even demonize the people that were involved. Like I said, I'm grateful because those times made me stronger and wiser and better overall. But I also know that if I didn't cling to God during those times, I wouldn't have made it out alive. The devil would have devoured me. So it's imperative to stay close to God at all times because the devil works overtime, especially if you were one of God's chosen. So it's important to constantly pray and meditate. A couple of things I do to keep from getting caught in the devil's web. Whenever I feel a dark thought come in, I immediately rebuke it. I pray and I affirm God is in control and I have faith in all circumstances. Another thing I do, whenever I'm struggling with a certain emotion, whether it's anger, frustration, bitterness, fear, whatever, I go on Topical Bible. It's this website called Topical Bible. I just go on my smartphone and I will type in whatever emotion I'm struggling with, whether it's fear, whatever. And it literally pulls up all the scriptures about that specific emotion. So if you type in anger, it'll pull up all the scriptures about anger. If you type in fear, it'll pull up all the scriptures about fear. That has been a lifesaver because there's times where I will be in the moment upset about something or feeling away about something, whatever emotion I'm feeling, I'm like, all right, let me type this in the topical Bible <laughs> so I can get some inspiration so I can get my hair right. <laughs> I think outside of praying, the two biggest things that keeps the devil out of your mind, number one is being present. Number two is being productive because they say the idle mind is the devil's playground. Whenever we worry, it's usually about the future. And whenever we dwell, it's usually on the past. So that's why it's important to try your best to just be in the present. If you are going to think about the future, only think about it in an optimistic and positive way. If you are going to think about the past, only think about the good memories and times that you had in the past. Don't dwell on mistakes you made. And when it comes to the future, don't worry about how things are going to play out because God works in mysterious ways and you really just have to trust God. So the last thing I want to talk about is the seven deadly sins, which are lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. These are the seven ways that the dark force lures you over to his side. And I want to talk about this really, really, really powerful movie that I watched a long time ago. And I still watch it from time to time. And it's called Devil's Advocate. If you've never heard of that movie or seen that movie, I highly recommend it. Especially if you are a spiritual person. That is a movie you need to watch. I still go back to that movie sometimes. Even though I've seen it plenty of times before. Because there's so many important messages in that movie. I don't want to give away too much of the movie. But the devil 
he lures the main character in through three of the seven deadly sins, and that's pride, lust, and greed. The main character is a lawyer, and he's constantly defending people who deep down he knows are guilty, but he's trying to defend them like they're innocent. So he constantly goes through this conflict in the movie. Pretty much one side of him is like, well, damn, hopefully spiritually, I know this person is guilty. This person did it. But at the same time, I don't want to lose my title as the best lawyer in town. I don't want to lose the money that I've been making off of all these cases. So he has like an inner conflict where he's like, you know, fighting himself and battling himself. And like I said, he's struggling with temptation, lust, greed, pride, all that. So by the end of the movie, he does the right thing. But the devil is still lurking. The devil is still right around the corner. I don't want to give too much away. Like I said, if you watch it, come back to this video and comment and tell me what you got from it. Tell me what you think. But like I said, it's a very powerful movie. And it's a good example of how the devil creeps into your mind. So I say all that to say, be mindful, be alert. Because like I said before, the devil works overtime. And the devil is always seeking someone to devour. Um, but I love you guys. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you like it. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you really feel like it was helpful, send it to somebody that you're close to who you feel like it will benefit from. And yeah, I will see you guys soon. Adios. Bye. <laughs>